Space, the final frontier, where no one can hear you scream. Welcome to my desktop. I've been playing, reading and of course writing a lot of sci-fi lately, so I thought I'd give you an overview of all the sci-fi RPGs that I would consider playing or running right now. In order of complexity, from the most simple rule system to the most complex rule system, without further ado, six awesome sci-fi RPGs. Mothership is an indie sci-fi horror RPG. It's very light on the rules. Character creation takes maybe 15 minutes. It's a deep percentile system. You've got hit points, you've got a wound system, you've got a stress system and a panic system. It's all very easy to grasp, very minimalistic. This is more of a narrative-focused game, and of course it is a game of horror. There's a lot of monsters and strange anomalies, evil corporations and so forth for your players to face and most likely die against. This is a pretty deadly system, but it is sci-fi horror after all. And if you're looking to run a horror game, a sci-fi one-shot, this is probably the best option just to grab, have your friends over, start playing within half an hour and have an awesome night of gaming. Mothership is a niche indie title but Tuesday Game Night is pretty generous when it comes to giving out third-party licenses and the game has taken the community in storm. So we'll find a lot of zines, adventure, third-party rules expansion. There is already a lot of stuff out there on DriveThruRPG or itch.io. And last but not least, uh, there's my own adventure, Shepherd Station, that I just released like two weeks ago. Pay what you want. Perfect for a Halloween special. Death in Space is easily mistaken for a sci-fi horror game, and often compared to Mothership, but it is actually not a horror game. The rules too are pretty streamlined and easy to grasp. Character creation should take no more than 15 minutes. It is a D20 system, classless, levelless. Everyone is basically a competent spacer and places more focus on like where your character came from, who they are. They have strange out there character origins and esoteric void powers that aren't really explained. What sets this game apart is its own setting, which is actually a post-apocalyptic setting in space. The corporate war has destroyed the uh, foundations that kept the industrial space society together, and now everyone's just kinda scraping by. It's about building on the ruins of the old world. It's about it's about finding the debris field of a space battle and rejoicing about all the scrap you can farm there. It's about cobbling together your equipment and your spacecraft and somehow survive. It's like Mad Max in space. It's NASA punk. And what this game does is it pulls the focus back from the big picture, the interstellar wars, the mega corporations, and more to uh, personal character levels. This is like uh, the found family, the found home. Your spaceship or your your station module is your home. This has great Firefly vibes, if you ask me. So if you like to explore a strange new world uh, sci-fi post-apocalypse, this NASA punk, and find your family and a home in the stars, even if it's made from scrap and basically a flying tent, this is the game for you. 
Death in Space is very much a niche title. There's only one official book, the core rulebook, and then you can find a few third-party adventures and expansions and so forth. There's not a lot out there, so you have to come up with your own stuff. The official Alien RPG. On first glance, this is, of course, a sci-fi horror game. The rules of medium complexity, easy enough to learn what character creation and if you create a whole crew with spaceship that will likely take more like an hour. So if you want to run a one shot you should start with pre-generated characters. When thinking of Alien of course you think of sci-fi horror of the xenomorph creature and that game has it of course and it does it very well. It has a cool stress mechanic which this is a d6 pool system and your stress points give you extra dice for your pool. But if on a skill check they turn up a 1, you have to do a panic roll. And that can mean you have a really bad panic reaction. You might just freeze, you might scream, you might go berserk. This will definitely complicate things. This is a relatively new game and there isn't that much official stuff out there but there is of course tons of stuff for for the alien franchise in general everyone has seen the movies there are comics there are novels all of this can be used as inspiration but what free league has done here is to expand on the setting beyond just the horror beyond just the xenomorph they recently put out a source book called Building Better Worlds, which is about playing other campaign concepts, not just sci-fi horror. You might run investigation, you might build up a colony, you might do a trading business, and that really rounds this whole system up from just a focus on sci-fi horror to become a complete sci-fi RPG that can accommodate a wide variety of genres. So if you love the alien setting with its like 80s sci-fi aesthetic and the corporate dystopia that is this future, then this is the RPG for you. Coriolis is stories of 1001 nights in space. You could describe it as a firefly if you replace the Wild West elements with Middle Eastern, Far Eastern folklore and mythology. And it is certainly a unique setting. The rules of medium complexity, I would say, Character creation, especially if you are creating an entire crew complete with their own ship, might take an hour, a few hours even. You might want to do an entire session zero if you are starting up a campaign. So if you just want to play a one-shot, do pre-gen characters. It's very much comparable to the Alien RPG based on the same rules engine and you might even interchange rules and monsters and equipment with the alien RPG if you want. The Coriolis setting depicts the third horizon which is a number of I think 36 systems that are connected by ancient star portals and very much becomes like a river system with gleaming cities strewn around a long river with just empty desert in between. So while this is a huge setting of many different planets, it's not an endless setting like Cypher RPG easily become because there are so many star systems out there. The rules are easily flexible enough to accommodate any style of play and any kind of draw and campaign. You can play traders, mercenaries, you can have 
exploring adventure, ruins, dungeon delving types of adventure, derelict spacecraft and horror, the classical alien type of adventure. You can have some mysticism in there with strange gins and ghosts. Court intrigue and diplomacy and trade and war mercenaries. This is a complete package. The main selling point of this is definitely its own setting, its very unique setting. There's not a huge amount of content out for it, notably the Mercy of the Icons three-part campaign, which is quite epic. But it has an open license, so there's a good amount of community content, not too much. Notably the community atlas that expands the descriptions of the different star system and planets. Stars Without Number is a general cipher RPG based on a classic D20 system. If you're familiar with D&D uh, like 2nd, 3rd or 5th edition, this is pretty easy to pick up. It's got character classes and levels. It's got its own sci-fi setting, which is uh, kind of like a general sci-fi setting. Humanity has spread out around the stars for a long time. There was a human empire, but that has fallen into ruin since then and been replaced by more like minor factions. You've got jump drive, you've got psionic powers and aliens. But it's very much what you make of it, because instead of giving you a fixed setting, it gives you all of the tools and random tables you need to make your own setting. This is a very nice game for an experienced GM who likes to do his own thing, likes to pick apart and rearrange and house rule the system to fit his needs come up with their own adventures and their own world. And this game just has so many great tools and tables that you might want to use them with uh, whatever system you're currently running. It's also compatible with all the other Without Numbers games, like World Without Numbers for more fantasy and magic, if you're going into like a more Star Wars direction, or Cities Without Numbers, which is cyberpunk, if you want to go into a more dystopian future direction. Last but not least is Traveler, science fiction adventure in the far future. This is kind of the big daddy of them all. This came out in 1977 and there's just a lot of it. It's famously for uh, its character creation rules, which are a life path system. You roll on some random tables through the former career of your character. And in old editions, the, you could die during character creation. Now it's more like determining uh, how good or bad your character is in certain things and how much money and shares of a ship they start the game with. Well, also very much puts them into a place in the wilder world and gives them their background. So it's a pretty nice system of character creation. The rules are pretty meaty, comparable to Stars Without Number, I'd say from all of the games, this is the most crunchy. And there's uh, just a lot of special abilities, a lot of equipment, spaceship, supplement rules, adventures, novels. The game has been running since 1977 and it has just continued to accumulate more and more stuff. So you can run any type of campaign in here from your small cipher horror to the uh, the traveler or the trader, the, the firefly type of campaign with a small group and a small ship doing some random jobs, smuggling, adventuring, whatever to just get by. You can run a military style campaign 
you can run an epic Star Wars style galactic war. The game supports all of that. It also has its very own setting that has been expanded on continuously with uh, famously uplifted animals, so you can play as cat people and wolf people along your humans, some psionic powers, a grand human empire, and I hesitate to compare it to anything. It kind of has this pulp sci-fi vibe for me. When I think of sci-fi series, especially from the 70s or 80s, something like maybe Captain Future, some French comic series, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Dune even, but it's still very much its own thing. There's a lot of product out there for you to explore, campaign setting, adventures, rule supplements, novels. If you just love sci-fi and you can't get enough of strange places and found universes, this is the game for you. And yeah, these are the uh, six sci-fi games that I would consider playing or running. Currently running a campaign of Coriolis that sadly never finds time to meet, so I'm usually playing one-shots of Mothership currently. But all of these games are great in their own right, and I can recommend you checking them out. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I wish thee safe travels, dreamers, until we shall meet again.